this is a video on more advanced for loops so we can uh, put loops inside of loops so anytime you see code tabbed in like this you can put other code inside it so uh, for example I can create a for loop here for and I can uh, so there we are with my tab and I can say for uh, I is set to one two and we're going to say uh, 10 and I'm actually going to put the end for afterwards like that and just the computer doesn't mind it when it's like this but I like to tab it in like that so we can kind of see what is in here so what's going to happen is we are going to run the outer for loop and that's going to go around 10 times and each time it goes round, the inner one is going to go round six times so if I run that it actually just seems to go round and round and round and round so I'm going to change it so it's a bit clearer that it's doing a new thing each time so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the turtle so turtle dot move and I'm going to move it by 10 and then uh, what's going to happen now is the first time around the loop it will run this loop to draw the hexagon and then it will move the turtle by 10 and then it will come around again it will draw another hexagon and move the turtle by 10 let's have a look so it's going to draw this move and then it's going to draw another hexagon 10 up and if we want to see the whole thing maybe we want to set the speed up to max and we'll see quite quickly it's drawing those 10 hexagons perfect so for some reason it's slowing down a bit let's not worry about that finishing uh, and if I wanted a different effect I could insert it, say turtle dot turn and then I could turn let's say by 36 and then it will go around 360 in total and run and you can see it's forming a rather sort of pleasing graphic shape because it's turning around as it goes now one of the mistakes that people make when they start using nesting for loops in small basic and this does affect some other languages as well is they name both of these things as counter let's have a look in debug what's going on so I'm going to show the variables and I'm going to say for i is set to 1 to 10 and counter so i is set to 1 and then counter is set to 1 and we go around this loop six times and you can see over on the left counter is clocking up nicely and you can see our turtle moving and now we do the turn and then i is set to 2 and then counter is set back to 1 and round we go again so we can kind of see how that works with the two different values for use for each loop what sometimes people do is they for example would use the counter for both of these things and if we run that in debug let's have a look so if I turn this on next line next line so counter is set to 1 counter is set to 1 and as we go along here everything seems perfectly fine for the first time around the loop but then we get to the end here and can you see counter is then set uh, to 8 and it will presume that counter is set to 8 and then on this line 
counter is set back to one again. So actually what will happen is this loop will never ever ever finish because the inner loop keeps on setting counter back to a lower value each time it goes on. And this will then loop forever and ever and ever and ever. That's not what we want. So let's uh, go back and just to summarize, these have to be named different things. So you could call this outer count, and then you could call that inner count if you wanted to. You can call them I and J. That's very traditional for programming languages. Um, or you can call them something else. The computer doesn't much mind. I hope that's cleared up that little misunderstanding as to why that is a problem. Uh, if you use nested for loops in your uh, design, perhaps you could use it for a window. So for example, if you create a square, rotate 90 degrees, create another square, rotate 90, create another square, rotate 90, create another square, it produces a pattern like a window. I hope you found that useful.